So in this video we're going to try and explain uh, how to find the nth term of linear sequences and quadratic sequences. Now in the example you see before you uh, we have a linear sequence of numbers. How can we tell that it's a linear sequence? Well, there's a common difference between each term, right? So between 3 and 7 is 4, between 7 and 11 is 4, 11 and 15 is 4, and so on. That's called the first difference. If the first difference is constant, then it's a linear sequence that we're dealing with. So you might be asked a question like this. Find the nth term of, of this sequence. So the nth term is basically a formula by which we can find out what the nth term of a particular sequence is. So for example you might be asked to find what is the say the 20th term in this sequence. You could list all the items out and you get to the 20th term but that would be rather a waste of time. Now there is a better way of doing this and that is using the nth term formula. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So the first thing we do is we calculate what the first difference is. So the difference between 3 and 7 is 4. N next thing we do is we place 4 beside the letter n. Now we might use this as our formula. Um, for example, if we wanted to find the first term, the first term w would mean that n is 1. So the first term would be 4 times 1, which gives us 4. So, and then the second term would be 4 times 2, which would give us 8. Now that differs from what we have here, so we have to adjust this formula uh, accordingly. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the difference between 4, which is what we calculate when we put 1 in for n here, and this term here, the first term here, which is 3. So the difference is 1. So in order for us to get to 3, we have to subtract 1 from 4n. And this is what gives us our nth term. So tn is how you write that. So tn equals 4n minus 1. And uh, the 4n minus 1 here is the formula. So let's just see if that really works. So if we put 1 in here for n, we get 4 minus 1, which is 3. If we put 2 in for n, we get 4 times 2 is 8, minus 1, which gives us 7. Uh, and so on. So 4 times 3 gives us 12, minus 1 gives us 11. So that formula seems to work pretty well. So let's go back to the original question we were asking. What is the 20th term in this sequence? Well, the easy way to find that out is uh, by getting the 20th term here. Uh, we, we, we simply put in 20 in for n in the formula, which gives us 4 times 20, which is 80, minus 1, which gives us 79. So the 20th term of this sequence, of this sequence up here, is 79. Okay, so let's do another example now where the first difference is negative this time. So again we have a linear uh, sequence, but this time this, the first difference is minus 3 each time. So it's going down by minus 3 to 7, and then minus 3 to 4, minus 3 to 1, and so on. So because the constant first difference, we know it's a linear sequence, and um, because it's minus 3, it's going downwards, uh, we, we, we're going to put minus 3 next to n this time. Okay, so now again, like we did before, we have to think, uh, what would that give us for the first term? So it would be uh, minus 3 times 1, which is minus 3. So the first term, if this were the rule, then the first term would be minus 3. But of course, um, the first term here is 10, right? So it's quite quite a bit different from this. So what do you have to do to minus 3 to get to 10? Well, you'd have to add 13. So what we do is we add 13 to minus 3n. And that gives us our nth term. So tn equals minus 3n plus 13. So therefore, if we wanted to find what the 20th term in this sequence would be, then all we'd have to do is um, put in 20 for n here, and that should, be, that should work it out. 
So term 20 will be equal to minus 3 times 20 plus 13. If you work that out, it, gets, it gives us minus 60 plus 13, which is minus 47. So the 20th term of this sequence would be minus 47, which would make sense because we're going down all the time, so it's going to be a minus number. So now that we've covered the nth term of a linear sequence, let's go ahead and find out how we get the nth term of a quadratic sequ sequence. Okay, so this is an example of a quadratic sequence. Now how do I know it's a quadratic sequence? Well, actually I don't right now, but I can, I can show you how to find that out. You can't really tell it straight away by looking at it. You have to first of all find out the first difference and then the second difference. And if the second differences are the same constant, then it's a quadratic uh, sequence. So we can see that the first difference is 7 here, 11 here. So between 10 and 21 you get 11. Between 3 and 10 you get 7. Uh, and it, the first difference here is 15, right? So the first differences are not constant. That means it's not a linear sequence. So let's just check to see if the second differences are constant. Right? So the difference between 7 and 11 is 4, and the difference between 11 and 15 is 4. So yes, in fact, it, it is a quadratic sequence. So one thing you can take as fact is that the, the nth term of a quadratic sequence will always look like in this form, right? So what the a, b, and c are numbers, and the n is just the the nth term, right? So, so you know for a fact that every single quadratic sequence will have a, an nth term in this form. Now it could be that either of these are zero. That's a possibility, but it would, in generally speaking, it will be in this form. The second thing you should know, and this is really very important to remember, is that the a value here is always a half of the second difference. So in this case it would be 2. Now, So therefore we can put 2 in instead of a. Now the, all that remains to figure out in, in this uh, formula would be the value of b and the value of c. So in order to do this we need to figure out the first term and the second term as follows. So the first term will be equal to 2 times 1 squared, so we put 1 in for n, uh, plus b times 1, again 1 goes in for n. And now we do know that the first term in the sequence is actually the number 3, so we can replace this t1 with 3. So we get 3 equals 2, so 2 times 1 squared is 2, plus 1 times b is b, plus c. Now all we need to do is kind of tidy up this equation a little bit. So what we do is we take the 2 over here, it becomes 3 minus 2, which gives you 1, and you're left with 1 equals b plus c. So that's as, as simple as we can get it. Now all we need to do is get one other equation with b and c in it, and once we've done that, we can do simultaneous equations to find out what the values of b and c are. So to get the second equation, um, we um, set the second term, term 2, equal to 2 times 2 squared, because instead of n squared, plus b times 2 plus c. Um, so we've replaced, basically replaced n with 2 in this case. And we also know that the second term of the sequence is equal to 10. So we can say that 10 equals 8, which is 2 times 2 squared, plus 2b plus c. And then just to simplify that down, we bring the 8 across here to be give us 10 minus 8, which gives us 2. So we're left with the equation 2 equals 2b plus c. So that's our second equation. Our first equation was 1 equals b plus c. So now that we have two equations with b and c in it, we can do simultaneous equations on those two equations and find out what the values of b and c are. So the first thing we need to do to solve this simultaneous equation is to match up either the b's or the c's and make sure that one of them is at least a minus so that we can cancel them out. So we want to cancel out probably the c in this case because they have the same number. Uh, so all we have to really do is change this to a minus by multiplying by minus 1. So when we multiply by minus 1, we get minus 2 equals minus 2b minus c. 
we just carry down the first equation here and the next thing we need to do is simply add the two equations so 1 minus 2 gives you minus 1 b minus 2b gives you minus b and uh, as we say the two c's cancel each other so um, now that we have minus on both sides we can simply multiply that by minus 1 to get rid of the minuses so we end up with b equals 1 now to find out what c is we simply need to substitute 1 in for b in either one of these equations so I'm going to use this equation so when we put 1 in for b here we get 1 equals 1 plus c uh, if we take the 1 over here it would be 1 minus 1 which is 0 so therefore c is equal to 0 now if you remember up to now our version of the nth term was equal to 2n squared plus bn plus c so we knew what the a was 2 because it was half the second difference but we didn't know what b and c were now we do we know b is 1 and c is 0 so we can finally write down what the definitive nth term of this quadratic sequence is so the nth term is equal to 2n squared plus 1n we don't put in a c value because c is equal to 0 so this is the nth term so for example if we wanted to find the 20th term we would simply put 20 in for n in this formula and that would give us the value of the 20th term okay so that wraps it up for the nth term of a quadratic sequence we've also shown you how to get the nth term of a linear sequence there is another type of sequence called an exponential sequence but i'll leave that for another video